So have I ever told you the definition of insanity? The definition of insanity is actually, it's quite simple. It is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting to get a different result. And I'm of the opinion that is a lot like testing a 3D printer because I'm a firm believer in the stance that you give a 3D printer, the exact same 3D printer to two different people and you're gonna get a completely different review. Unless they use the exact same filament, the exact same profiles, the exact same slicer, they're printing the exact same models in the exact same environments using the exact same workflow, there's gonna be variables at play that are gonna give you a different result, a different outcome. It takes a while to do a 3D printer review. So it's been about a week since I've gotten the Core 1 from Prusa. They did send it over to me for testing and evaluation. We did do an unboxing on a live stream. And since then, I haven't been testing this printer. I've been using it because I have projects that need 3D printed parts. I'm working on building a LDO Motors box turtle kit and it needs ABS parts. So after we got this printer out, we did a few little test prints just to make sure things were working. I threw it up on the bench, loaded some ABS on it, and started putting it to work. And if you want my opinions on this printer after about a week of using it, it's quite simple. It's a Mark IVs, but better. That's that's pretty much the easiest thing I can say. It's got the same tool head as the Mark IVs, so you got the better cooling. It is a more rigid motion system because it's Core XY, not a bed flinger. And along with it being Core XY and not a bed flinger, it's more space efficient. You don't have to worry about that bed flapping back and forth. And the enclosure is the frame itself, so it takes up much less room on your desk than a Mark IVs in its own enclosure. So. It's pretty much the Mark IVs, but better in every way. It's even got a little bit more print volume in the Z. Some things I can complain about on it. Um, it's as good as a Mark IV, but better, but there are some things. Uh, the camera, uh, I really wish it included a camera stock. The camera is an optional add-on. Uh, it is an IP webcam. So the camera doesn't actually talk to the printer. The camera talks to your Wi-Fi network and then Prusa Connect basically merges the printer and the camera together. And while the frame rate is not great by any metric, it's measured in seconds per frame instead of frames per second, uh, the image itself is very crisp and clear. There's a lot of lighting in the machine, so you can make sure that you're not making spaghetti or not when you tab over to Prusa Connect while you're doing something else on your computer or pull it out on your phone, just to make sure things are going good. Uh, the Wi-Fi, on the printer itself is still pretty dang slow, but it does have the advantage where files will start printing while it transfers the file over. So in real world use case, it doesn't really affect much. Um, and also this is gonna be a real little nitpick, but this is annoying me. Um, the spool holder, I know it's a 3D printed one and I can 3D print a replacement. That's not the issue. The thing is, why didn't you just include the one from the XL that expands out? Because I've got a bunch of two kilogram spools and they don't fit on this one. This. This one doesn't move. But otherwise, yeah, that, that's my opinion on the printer. It's a Mark IV, but betterer. So you may have noticed though, that we are nowhere near through the whole video. We still got a while to go on the timeline there. So what is this video actually about? Well, it's something that I've been wanting to work on for a while. And that is the fact that I suck at CAD. I, I can't design stuff. I've been a part of the Voron design team for years and I can't CAD myself out of a cardboard box. Um, I've done some brackets over the years. I've done some little stuff here and there, but it's mostly just kind of sketch something in Fusion 360, extrude, and throw a bunch of chamfers on it. So with this printer, when Prusa sent this printer over, uh, they did include some extras. And one of the extras they included were a bunch of the magnets uh, that they use with their printer builds. Uh, and the cool thing with the Core 1 is the fact that, hey, the whole frame is, is steel. Magnets stick to it really good. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone. One, I wanted to make the machine a little bit better at printing ABS and ASA because I'll be honest, this machine is probably gonna spend most of its life out here in my garage with the door closed, printing higher temp materials. And two, I wanted to learn to model. I wanted something to practice with. I wanted to make a mod for a 3D printer. That's something I've never actually done before. So I made this, but what is this? Well, we'll, we'll get to it in a second. So what is this mod for? What, what was my goal? Well, 
if you look at the back of the Prusa Core 1 here, we have a hole in it, a big honking hole. These are two exhaust fans. If you've noticed any of the marketing for this machine, one of the things they advertised was the fact that this can print PLA with the door closed reliably. On a lot of enclosed Core XYs that you've seen released over the past little while, to print PLA on them, they recommend that you print with the door wide open. Now, this door is Uncle Jesse proof, so you don't have to worry about it breaking if you open it up all the way. And it does open a full 180. So it's not like some other printers where the door sticks straight out into your aisle asking for you to bump your head against it. This opens all the way and you don't gotta worry about breaking it. But still, it'd be a lot better if you could just, you know, leave the door closed. You don't have to worry about cats or kids getting in there. And hey, it's designed to do that. You have a vent at the top here, open the vent. With your printing with PLA, it turns the fans on in the back. The printer profile tells it to do that. And it draws in cool air and blows out hot air. And does it work? Well, it kind of does. It works pretty good. Um, I did some testing out here in my garage with the door open, ambient temperature in my garage, anywhere from 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. I do live in Canada. It is winter and I am in a garage. It is what it is. Um, I was getting about 22 degrees Celsius in the chamber. Now with the door closed, running the exact same print, same profile, not changing anything, opening the vent, letting the fan do its thing, we were getting about 26, 27 degrees Celsius, according to the chamber thermistor. And if you're wondering where the chamber thermistor is, it's right at the back, uh, right where the exhaust fans are themselves. That's where it's mounted. Uh, but that's at the fan at 40%. If you actually crank the fan up to 100%, it's actually about 25 degrees Celsius. And those temperatures are plenty low enough for PLA to print good. So let's take a look at these test prints. So this is all Prusament PLA orange, and this is all stock profiles on the machine. I haven't changed any settings. So the first one is the door open. And as you can see here, it comes out to this 80 degree overhang, pretty good. Uh, bridging is pretty solid. Not really a lot of stringing there. There's your top surface and there's another overhang test. So there you go. That's. That's pretty good. So let's start changing it up. So first things first, this is with the door closed and no vent filter. So this is stock machine just with the door closed. And as you can see here, we do have a little bit more up here when it comes to that 80 degree overhang in terms of stringy bits hanging down. Um, but other than that, maybe a little bit more meltiness on this overhang right back here. Maybe a little bit more melty on this. Hopefully the camera can catch it versus the open door. Eh, maybe they're pretty close. You make your judgment there. Um, overhangs are still good. And when it comes to stringiness, we really don't have any. And there's our top. So as you can see with the door closed, it's pretty much like margin of error different. But that's PLA. I don't print a lot of corn plastic and I have machines inside my house that are open frame that I use for that. This machine is probably gonna be spending most of its life out here in my garage printing ABS, ASA, and other higher temp materials. So how do you do that on this machine? Well, it's quite simple. You close the door, you close the vents, and on the back of the machine, uh, you don't turn the fans on, but you still have a hole here. You still have a pretty big hole at the back of the printer. So let's take care of that by making an exhaust filter. It designed something and it actually kind of works, but not at all. And we'll get to it in a second. What is this? This is the, the goal for this was simple. I wanted to make a magnetic filter that covers the back exhaust. Uh, you fill it with activated charcoal pellets, the same thing you would use in like a Nevermore. And it, this should hopefully solve two things. One, it'll help with smells and fumes from the material. And two, what I'm hoping is kind of the same effect that happens on the Pantheon. On the Pantheon HS3 that they sent over, it has exhaust fans in the back, but it also has a filter behind it. And the filter isn't really there to filter smells. The filter that is there so that when you are printing without the fans activated, it basically gives the hot air kind of some static pressure it needs to overcome before it exhausts. So it, it, it basically lets the heat stay in the chamber until the fans kick on. And then when the fans kick on, it pushes the hot air through the filter and out of the chamber. So I was hoping to replicate that with this. So I came up with this nifty little design. Now it's magnetic because it's activated charcoal. It needs to be replaced. So this way it's now toolless. Toolless is cool. 
Um, it's printed in three different parts. It's got some grills here to let air through and keep the pellets in. Uh, the bottom, I went through a few different revisions. And if you're wondering how the whole design process went for this, we actually did it on a live stream. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out when we do our live streams during the week. Um, and if you wanna watch me make a fool of myself with CAD, you can go back and watch that live stream. But we designed it on the live stream. I made some revisions, uh, I think three or four revisions to get it to this final state. And I was happy, it prints, it goes together great. But the real question is, how well does it work? And the answer is quite simply, it does absolutely nothing. And in fact, it actually makes things worse. What? <laughs> um, so, okay, what's going on here? How, what, how can I confirm this? The first thing's first, you need to test stuff. You can't just assume. Well, I'm like, okay, I assume that by putting this on the back here and the vent is at the bottom, well, the hot air in the chamber now won't just drift out the hole in the back. And by having the hole at the bottom, hot air rises. So it should kind of hopefully prevent hot air from escaping out the back. And then hopefully if I'm printing a PLA print, for example, uh, the fan will be able to force the air through, overcome the resistance um, and, and it will still work with PLA and hopefully give us some better chamber temperatures with ABS and ASA. So, so let's start with some testing. So first things first, door closed, vents closed, and we remove the filter box. Let's do an ABS print. Again, printed one of these calibration prints, all the same print for everything. And we got a chamber temperature max of 54 degrees Celsius. Now I did notice as the print went on, the chamber temperature did drop, but this was also when it was printing mostly overhang parts of this print. So I'm wondering if the, having the cooling fan on a little bit higher, moving some air around inside the chamber caused the temperatures to drop. But these prints all printed beautifully. And I'm not gonna lie, for ABS prints, this might print ABS a little bit better than it prints PLA in, in certain conditions. These prints are only like 10 minutes longer in print time, but for ABS prints, this is a Polymaker Polylite ABS. They came out damn good, not gonna lie. Pretty much all the ABS prints actually came out about the same. This is Polymaker Polylite ABS, um, stock, Prusament ASA profile, that's the profile I used for it, didn't change any variables. And as you can see here, it prints ABS like a treat. This is beautiful and we got some pretty good layer adhesion here. Like these aren't, this isn't snapping off. Now I do know Polylite ABS isn't pure ABS, it is a blend, but uh, it's what I used for the testing because it's a very commonly used ABS and uh, yeah, not too shabby for the abs on this machine. So anyways, we do that. Okay, cool. There's our baseline. That's the stock configuration for the machine. Let's go ahead and put on our filter that's supposed to keep more hot air in the printer. We fire up the printer, we do our print and the chamber temperature is exactly the same. Same temperature, the same max temperature. We, we, we didn't improve anything. Okay, well, on the bright side, if you actually run the fan a little bit, it does cut down the smell a bit and the chamber temperature still stays the same because I tested that too. I, I ran the fan uh, on auto, so 40% with this on. I got the exact same chamber temperature that I got without having the fan on. And um, my sense of smell is pretty much destroyed by this point. Uh, but I did kind of notice a little bit less VOC odor in the garage while it was doing that. So minor victory. So best case, it cuts down on smell. Worst case, it doesn't do any damage. That's, that's something. But what it does do damage is when you try to print PLA because um, with the door closed, the vent open and the fans on printing PLA, uh, we get a chamber temperature of, let me look at my chart here, 29 to 30. We made it worse. <laughs> and it's actually now at the temperature where uh, the print quality is degrading. Um, it, it's, it's a bit meltier. Uh, we start getting a little bit of stringing, as you can see. And this is where it starts to get a little melty on this overhang right here. Um, depending on what you're printing, that might not be an issue, but anything with heavy overhangs or lots of little points, you're probably gonna start seeing stringing. So the vent filter doesn't really help with PLA. It makes things worse. Uh, and if you wanna see absolute worst test, this is closed with the vent filter, no fan, but with the overhead vent open. Um, and as you can see here, yeah, it starts to get melty. We're pushing up into like the mid thirties for chamber temperature and it, it's getting, is getting a little melty in there, so that's not good. The plan for this was that this would be something that sits on the back of the printer. When you print ABS, you turn the fan off, 
you get higher chamber temperatures because it's kind of preventing some of the air from escaping, the hot air. And when you print PLA, the fan is able to push that hot air out and draw in cool air from the vents and some of the small gaps in the frame. But uh, at the end of the day, it looks like my hypothesis was disproven. So at least we did science because we wrote down our data. I got a little chart over here in Notepad. So on the bright side, we learned something. On the unbright side, um, it cut down the smell a little bit, I guess, if you count that as a win. But on the even brighter side, I learned some CAD. This was mostly an exercise learning how to CAD. Don't be afraid to learn something new. One of the cool things with 3D printing is you can print anything you can design. But one of the biggest hurdles of 3D printing is so many people get a 3D printer and they don't know how to design and they don't learn how to design. I was one of those people for years. I just relied on other people's designs and models to print on my printers. And eventually you do get to the point where you get kind of not burnt out, but you run out of things to do with your, your printer. So the biggest takeaway from today's video uh, is twofold. One, Prusa makes a really good, better Mark IV. It's called the Core One. Um, if you are considering buying a Mark IV S, consider getting a Core One, unless you plan to only ever print PLA and PETG um, and you want a machine that is slightly quieter. This is a bit louder. It does have some extra fans, obviously, with the exhaust. And Core XY is a higher speed motion system. It does make a little bit more noise, but I still find it quieter than most of the other enclosed Core XYs I've tried out over the years, at least commercial off-the-shelf ones. And the other thing we're gonna take away from this is learn to CAD. Download a CAD software package. I, I use Fusion 360 just because that's what I'm used to. If, if you want to use Onshape or OpenCAD or any of the other ones, go for it. Just learn to CAD because um, you want to take the full advantage of your 3D printer. And you can't do that if you're just relying on printables or Thingiverse for models. So uh, think of a project. Let me know in the comments below a project you want to do with your 3D printer that you want to do from scratch. Design it yourself because 3D printers are fun but they're just tools. You need to figure out how you're gonna use your tool. Anyways, I'm Taylor the Canuck Creator. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Again, thank you Prusa for sending the Prusa Core One for testing and evaluation. If you wanna grab one for yourself, I do have a link for it in the video description. It is an affiliate link, but it does go a long way in supporting the channel, the content I create, and the things I do. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And other links down there, like GamerSups, use code Canuck, save 10% off your order. And don't forget to like the smash button, ring the bell, and I will see you in the future. Cheers. Now comes the part where I walk off screen and then I walk over to the camera and I turn it off. Goodbye.